Then there are people who prepare two months before Ramadan. Did you not hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informing us about the virtue of Rajab? Rajab, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to increase in fasting. Then Shawwal came and Aisha radiallahu anha used to say, I never saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam increasing in his worship, fasting more and donating more in charity than, and doing actions of good deeds more than any other month other than Ramadan, more than the month of Shawwal. Why is the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching us to prepare this way, because the shaitan is ready. Your nafs is going to get the better of you. So you need to train it just before Ramadan so that you can get the best out of Ramadan. The Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ, when they used to prepare for Ramadan, it was six months in advance. And when Ramadan finished, they stayed for six months after it, worshipping Allah and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to specifically have accepted the rewards of Ramadan. The shaitan knows this. And he is your enemy. And the shaitan knows that the month of Ramadan, they're going to be away. So they have to prepare to make you lose. So we prepare a little bit before it. Increase in your fasting. And wallahi, wallahi, it has its enormous effect on you by the time you reach Ramadan. You will be more prepared, more ready than anyone else. And in fact, you'll be the type that will feel that secret mercy which is bestowed upon an individual during Ramadan of an enormous energy that no one else can feel. You'll find yourself being able to wake up in the middle of the night without any problems. Your eyes will just open automatically at the time of suhoor. Your heart will complete, will continue pumping as though it is reading Quran. Wallahi, I know of people who are so used to their words repeating the Quran during Ramadan that when they go to sleep and they wake up, they feel that their lips were dry as though they were reading the Quran all night. These are people who have prepared themselves. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did say, Raghima anfuhu, raghima anfuhu, raghima anfuhu. May his nose be rubbed in dust three times. And the Sahaba said, Who ya Rasul Allah? He said, Man balagha Ramadan wa lam yughfar lahu. Whoever reaches Ramadan and they haven't been forgiven. So there is no greater opportunity than the time of Ramadan for our forgiveness. O oh, you who has regretted their sins. O oh, you who knows of secret sins that no one else knows about. And you, and you cry in the night and you feel so guilty about it and you've given up almost hope. This is your time insha'Allah ta'ala to get rid of this burden off your shoulders. The shaitan comes directly from the front, directly from the back through his allies and he, through his deception and from the front through his allies and leaving a seed in your desires before Ramadan and from the sides the shaitan finds it difficult, the, sh the angels are there. And here is where the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his love for you is really shown. Why didn't Iblis mention from above and from the bottom? He said, I will come to them from the front, the back, the sides. But he didn't mention, وَمِن فَوْقِهِمْ وَمِن تَحْتِهِمْ Have you ever thought about that? And I will approach them from the, above them and from beneath them. Why didn't he say that? Because he knows that above you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose mercy descends upon you. And when you lift your arms up to Allah in dua, Allah does not allow any evil, any obstacle, any distraction between you calling upon your dear Lord and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responding to His beloved servant. It's a direct, direct connection. And Allah says in the Quran, And if my servants ask you about me, O Messenger of God, tell them, I am close, I am very close. فَإِنِّي قريب, I am close. I will respond to the person who calls upon me when they call. So let them respond to my call. Let them respond to me. Because the way that I command you, Allah is saying, is the way to me. Is the way to me. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us something or prohibits us something, He is actually drawing the line or the road for you in how to get close to Him. How to feel His presence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the point where, to the point where you continue to do the compulsory actions until you do the voluntary actions after that until Allah says, I become your eye which you see with, your hearing which you hear with, your leg which you walk with, your hand which you touch with. And if you were to ask me for anything, I will give you. And if you seek refuge in me from anything, I will give you protection. And there is nothing worse to me, Allah says, hated to me, than the time when I have to take the soul of that person out. And he is feeling the pain while I hate to do so, but only to bring him back to me. Ablis did not mention from the bottom. Why not from the bottom? Because when you put your head down in sujood, and sujood is only to Allah, do we make sajda to anyone else? No, we don't. So when you make that sujood, it is a special connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
and Iblis cannot, and the Shaytan cannot interfere between you and Allah. So there are two very close connections. In your dua to Allah when you are standing, sitting on your side. And in your sujood, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ لِرَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ The closest time a servant is to Allah is when they are in prostration. So make your dua in prostration.